Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map I'm going to be trying out is one called Runaway 911, a classic style Gmod horror map, judging by this classic style Gmod horror map title screen, and one which has been on my list since at least October, but I've been putting it off because it seems like it's going to have a lot of custom scripting which can sometimes cause some issues with regards to VR, but there's precedent for this scenario now. If you'll remember back, we had some issues on Horror Hotel as well, and if it becomes too bad, we'll just switch to regular mode halfway through. Story. You are a police officer. You worked the night shift and patrolled the roads. And one night, the unknown exceeded the speed and you started chasing him. The intruder crashed and disappeared into an abandoned house nearby. Alright, so that's a cool unknown to start us off on. Who were we chasing? The writing's a little rough. Presumably it's a direct translation from Russian. Pay attention here. Now there's three exclamation marks so you know it's important. 1. Use no clip only if you get stuck. Don't break the map with it. 2. For a better experience... Play at night with the headphones, and make the volume on maximum. 3. If you find some bug on the map, then better inform the developer or leave a comment. Okay, will do. Tips. Some locked doors can be unlocked from the other side. You can open some cabinets and drawers. Keys and other important items begin to light up if you have found them. Found them, I guess. Alright, let's see what this is. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh. Oh, it's a cutscene. Oh, that is weird in VR. Wanted. The police department is want- Oh, I didn't get to read that. Ooh, that was nauseating. Oh, this is still nauseating. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll go back and record this uh, normally so you guys can see it like that. The way it was meant to be seen. Oh, this is actually a very impressive intro for what it is. I don't know if I've ever seen a map start this way yet. Oh my god! Oh, I've been mangled in the car accident! What happened to my body? Oh! Um, hang on. I gotta... I gotta open up the... I gotta open up the height menu and see if I can fix this. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Send back up! Uh, auto scale's not gonna get me out of this one. Officer Flat Screen, did someone call for backup? Uh, seems I'm too late. There's nobody here. Uh, this is such a cool intro. I don't know if I've ever seen a Gary's Mod map start with like a multiple shot cutscene that way. And something that's making me really sad, I wasn't able to do this in VR. Look at this ambiance. And that really creepy, but really familiar music in the background. I really hope that doesn't become a copyright issue. Uh, the way this is lit, it actually kind of reminds me of that one segment of Cry of Fear. When we crashed the train and lost our bag and had to venture off into the woods using only a lantern. That! That's a little bit more powerful than a lantern. Ah, oh, that's much, much brighter than I was expecting. Before I get going, I'm just going to comment on the fact that I really do love the idea of using car lights to light a scene. Both in games and in film. It's an actual, natural-looking way to actually get a lot of light and a lot of contrast and colors into a scene in a way that doesn't look like studio lighting. Alright, but... Remember your training, remember your job. We've got 
We've got a speeding suspect to catch. A speeding suspect who, it seems, was injured in the crash. Ah, oh, this can't be good. The bottom windows are boarded up, but all I can see is darkness and the ones on top, which uh, makes me feel the eyes on me as I enter this yard. Now, the workshop page says that there are, I think, four different keys we can find to unlock a bonus area at the end, so I can't promise that I'm going to find all that, but I am going to keep on the lookout. The way the creator talks about this map, it makes it seem like there is going to be a fair amount of exploration to do. Of course, I have to try the front door first, at the very least. I can only barely and for an instant see through that crack. When I try to peek through windows at the beginning of a horror game, I feel like a kid trying to shake a box to see what's in it. The bloodstains lead up to the side door, so whoever ditched the car definitely went inside. I wish this flashlight wasn't so bright. This is actually a lot of bloom that's being reflected back into my face. I know I always complain about really pathetic flashlights, but this is a little too far in the opposite direction. This looks a lot more spacious than what we saw on the outside. Well, I guess not, but still, this is much, much bigger than the facade would have you believe. I'm not even going to call attention to the fact that it has a bunch of paintings and wall sconces placed about like a classic 50s haunted house. I just heard something creak. Should I perhaps draw a gun or something? It looks like this place has been abandoned for years. This place looks like it's been abandoned for a very long time. And of course, like I said in the beginning, there's still the mystery of who this person is, and why they were speeding and willing to run from the police. This place looks like it's been abandoned for years. This place looks like it's been abandoned for years. Which brings me right back to the question of who this person was, and why they were speeding and willing to run from the police to get here. And I guess it raises the question of, were they trying to get here? Because to run into a place like this, to me that seems like less than coincidence. That's quite a large blood stain. Oh, I recognize that picture from, well, I recognize that picture from the last decade of the internet, but it was also on the wall in abandoned school. Huh. Why do old houses always have such creepy pictures? I suppose any painting could look creepy if you slap a rusted, dirty old frame around it, but Nevertheless, couldn't people in the past please just smile for a picture? I mean, I feel like by about the 50s, you can get the shutter speed fast enough that you don't have to sit still for like 30 seconds anymore. This 
is a very strange layout to this house. Like, the hallways are huge. Uh, there's a lot of different ways I can go, but I feel like I have to explore a little more. Mm. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't let me through. I would actually almost uh, venture to say it's like a liminal space and that it doesn't really resemble the type of thing it's supposed to be. It has the facade of a residential house, but the interior certainly doesn't feel like one. Okay, well, in the absence of anywhere else to go, I think the only thing we can do is crawl through this little space here. Oh no, a bookcase maze. Something that I'm having mixed thoughts on is the utter lack of any ambient sounds whatsoever. It had, an, it had some eerie music playing in the beginning to set the mood, but in here? In here, there's literally nothing. No soundtracks. Not even creaking floorboards, although... It certainly does have me listening super closely. It's making me a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. There's that creaking again. All but two are blank. Crazy. Hmm. An old movie poster to date the scene, I suppose. That's a pretty smart idea, actually. Something that you're not too likely to get in copyright trouble for, but which says just how long this place is supposed to have been empty for, which it seems like is meant to be decades. Very rare to find an abandoned house this large and with no vandalism or anything, which leads you to wonder why. Okay. The Washington Post. A terrible crime. Last Sunday, March 13th, in a private home in the District of Columbia, there was a terrible murder of members of the Walker family. At half past five in the evening, a passing car stopped in front of the house. The driver found several bodies at the entrance to the yard. Unknown criminals cut their throats and hung them in the trees in plain sight. After receiving a call to the police department, the police quickly rushed to the scene and began to... And the caption of the image says, Investigate and search for the missing son. 1982. Okay, so not only is this... Not only is this a run-of-the-mill abandoned house... It's a murder house. And I guess one of the one of the supposed victims was never actually found. Which begs the question, if this place was abandoned immediately after the murder in 1982 or murders, why would a newspaper article about that event be inside the sealed up house? Can we open these? The thing said that some of these can be opened. Oop. Yeah, it's a little frustrating. When I get close to things, it seems like the flashlight isn't exactly lined up with my vision. It's a little bit higher when I crouch, so it kind of puts a lot of things in shadow when I should be looking directly at them. I'm also noticing that my jump is a little bit gimped in this map. Uh, I'm stuck. I tried to take this pot out, and I started closing the drawer, the cabinet, and now I'm pinned and I can't get out. Okay, there we go. Alright, anything inside? I just want to take you out because I want to see if there's anything inside. Because it did tell me to be on the lookout for some hidden collectible... 
Uh, okay, that's a little unexpected. Are you... are you the one I was chasing? Or are you someone who ran into the one I was chasing? In any case, can I take that axe? Because I really feel like I'm needing it. I know it's probably not exactly standard operating procedure to take that from you, but... I feel a little unsafe, and apparently I'm the only cop in America without a service weapon. More blood over here. We can crawl into the wall right here. And that's locked, so the only way we can go is through that little crawl space. Oh, look. Look, it says 666, so you know it's scary. Hello? Did I press it just a second too late? I think I just heard a footstep that isn't mine. See, that's what I was saying about having mixed feelings on having no ambient sounds at all. I'm not even saying it should have, like, creepy music or anything, but even just the sound of, like, the wind whistling through the gaps in the window. That kind of thing would be nice, but then again, when it's completely silent, you take a lot more notice when you hear what might have been a footstep the floor above. Out of my way, chair. Ugh. These shadows are so harsh. There's gonna be a jump scare! Now would be the time to do it! Uh... Okay, I've recovered. Moving on. Ah, so this is the other side. Okay, so we're now two for two bodies. I assume the one in the other room is the guy we were chasing. This one? This one looks like it's been around a little longer. Am I still meant to be in pursuit? I mean, at what point do I radio for backup? I would think after the very first body, I would think after the car accident that landed me here. That would probably be a good time to start. Oh my god, this place is absolutely huge. We're just in, like, a courtyard. This isn't just a residential house. This is a full-on mansion. With cheap shingles. Siding, I mean. The generator lever is broken. I saw a spare on the second floor in the pantry. I went to work. Honey, don't forget to replace it. Uh... Okay, well, I have a flashlight. What do we need the power for? Yeah, certainly a liminal vibe from this space. It has all the furnishings of a residential area. It has the exterior of a residential area. But the interior, I just can't imagine everyone, anyone living here. Wait, all this looks familiar. Have, is this where I've been already? Yeah, this leads to where I entered from. So the whole thing still remains accessible. These doors were just locked earlier, so everything that's new is going to be over here to the right of that door. Actually, let's take a look in these cabinets. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Okay, so it, it is a jump scare fest, but let's look on the bright side. At least it's actual 3D models and not a JPEG jump scare fest. Can't... I, I still feel a little bit obligated to open up every cabinet in the area, though. While exploring this small area, I've come up with a couple of things I want to comment on with regards to the architecture. So the first thing is, if you look in here, 
We have this kind of combo uh, dining room and kitchen setup. And something that I really like here is how it's all one room, but it has features that kind of split your field of visibility. So when you come over to the kitchen, we have this bar style counter that ends in this pillar. So even though it's all one space, you get the impression that your view is being obscured. You don't know if there could be somebody hiding under this counter or behind the pillar, and that they could pop out as you approach. Now, of course, this would look a little better if it weren't for these super harsh shadows, but the idea is still there. You're in a room with something that could attack you, but you won't see them until you get close, and they have the opportunity to pop out at you. Now, that's distinct from, say, a threshold between rooms, where it's, okay, somebody might be in that room, and I'm in this room, and they could come over here. Here, you're already in the room with the danger. And I feel like psychologically, that's a little bit more disturbing. Same thing with this window over here. I find something disturbing about interior windows to begin with, but just having that obstruction of your view within one space, I just find that really, really creepy. Now, if you look over here, this is just something that I feel like more source map makers could stand to look at. We have paintings on the wall on the left, we have a sconce on the right, ceiling lamps all down the middle, and at the end, there's a, there's a uh, window that is obscured by a curtain, and we see the trees outside. Now what that does is this whole image could almost be a painting. It's just, it's an interesting image to look at all its own. It's a narrow hallway that kind of focuses your vision, and by having the curtain kind of only cover half the windows, it almost makes it feel like somebody's going to peek in. Oh, I also like these lines of windows that are totally uncovered. Something about the repetition and the sheer number of them, it kind of makes it feel like, okay, which one is it going to be? Something's got to happen with one of these. It's almost like in Scooby-Doo when they walk past a row of paintings and then the last one is just the monster standing behind an empty frame. All right, but enough of the horror hour with Ty Pennington. Let's do our job and figure out what's going on here. We are a cop after all. Uh, what is this? There's like an info key or info queue just hovering above this gap. Now this mod has gimped our ability to jump, so I don't think we're gonna be able to make that jump. I think we probably have to find something to put over it. Uh, not only is it giving us more interior windows, which I hate so much, but it's giving us interior windows that are distorted. Imagine if we just saw somebody walk away as we came into view. Stairs going down. That's going to be the only way we can go, isn't it? I also just really appreciate having multiple paths through the same area. It kind of makes it feel like something could be hiding from you as you make your way through. A linear path, I feel like, gives an impression of safety. And something like this kind of denies you that. Huh, so it looks like there's some piece that goes in a fireplace? And what is all this? There's a typewriter. Doesn't seem like we can interact with it, though. It's like some kind of study, but it looks like someone has knocked things down and torn through the place. Alright, let's head downstairs. Uh, this is advanced darkness. Oh, <laughs> this is actually doing something... I haven't talked about this in a while, but this map is doing something that I really, really appreciate. There are no ambient lights. It's not doing that stupid trope where somehow, just inexplicably, the electricity is working even though it's been abandoned for decades. We have our flashlight and that's it. Like I've said, I do feel like it would work a little bit better if... I'm oh, sorry, I broke your thing. I do feel like it would work a little bit better if it wasn't such an incredibly bright flashlight. Huh. Oh. I saw something poking from around the corner there, and I thought it was someone's arm. 
Uh, maybe I'm just having flashbacks to the way enemies would hide around corners in Condemned. Do I push these boxes out of the way? Uh, this doesn't look like a regular basement. This looks like somebody was doing some custom tunneling. Look at that. Curtains. Curtains in a basement. This area actually kind of reminds me of... Uh, do you guys remember that house that became really kind of internet famous a few months back? Maybe even over a year ago. When it went up for sale and it had all these really winding and nonsensical corridors inside. It was up on like Zillow or one of those house listing sites and you could do the 3D tour. Uh, well, that's all blocked off. I'm not sure where else I'm meant to look now. Something that I feel like is going to mess me up is how, because of the way the shadows are working, when I come to a desktop, the whole thing becomes completely enshrouded in darkness. So I can't see anything that's on it. So if there's going to be something on top of one of these things, I'm going to have a really hard time actually seeing it. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's a glow on this board. I bet I can pick this up and use it to cross the gap upstairs. Yeah, if I had just stuck to my... Because I was looking for the piece for the fireplace, so if I had just stuck to my original goal, it would have been more obvious to me, so that's on me. You weren't there before. Oh my god, I wasn't even paying attention. A oh, perfect, perfect execution of a silent jump scare. But whatever, something we have to solve is out there, because I can see the glowing objective indicator. You know what? Perhaps that's actually the, uh, perhaps that's the generator. Alright, so we can go down and out this door. Ah, I see. Oh! Maybe we don't put the cross in the fireplace, maybe we take it out of the fireplace. See, the place is so bare that when I actually come across a busy scene like this, it's actually a little bit more unnerving. I don't know if it's intentional, but it's definitely creepy. Uh, we're on the porch now, the patio that looks out onto the, uh, onto the courtyard. We found this, which I assume is a key, and it goes straight into my inventory. Great, so I don't have to worry about carrying around physics props and juggling where they are. Oh, you know what? I just noticed. There is actually, for the first time, there are actually ambient sounds out here. We can hear the crickets. This is actually quite a comfortable place to hang out. more blood. That is a very suspicious indentation in the wall. Hmm. I wonder if something's gonna go there. That looks like another type of key. Or maybe, oh no, you know what? That's probably the lever it was talking about. It's probably the lever for the, uh, for the generator. But I still have other things to find up here, so I'm going to put you down for now. That's locked. Actually, maybe uh, this is probably a bad idea, but maybe I should take you out onto the porch and just throw you down there with the generator. Oh, I'm going to end up losing you. All right, it's right there by the tree underneath the porch. I can jump down through here. Is that some place I've already been or no? Have we tried this door to the left of the stairs yet? It's locked. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! 
Uh, 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 you never expect a jump scare in territory you've already cleared. I'm just heading back, innocently looking for, for a fireplace where I might have, uh, innocently looking for a fireplace I might have overlooked. Oh, screw you, map. I'm having fun, but screw you. All right, let's go down and try that lever. Maybe more will be revealed once we get that generator going. Er, plunk. And let's turn you on. So let's turn you. Lever not working. Maybe need a need a gas to. Oh, I've been doing this without my HUD on. So I turned off the HUD so that I could uh, watch the cutscene without the dots in the middle. But it seems like I've been working. I've been missing uh, these tips this entire time. Lever not working. Maybe need two gas cans. All right, and thus the search resumes. You heard that, right? It sounded like footsteps outside. I don't know if I missed somebody walking by the windows, but... Oh, that's creepy. The kind of thing I might not have noticed had there been ambient sounds. I mean, that's the thing. I... I always talk about ambient sounds, and it's a topic that I myself am not sure on. Is it scarier to have no ambient sounds at all, or a creepy ambient soundscape. And certainly that's a tool that can be used any combination of ways. It, it certainly creates a vibe when you have a soundscape and then it cuts out into silence and vice versa. But as for which is scarier to go with for an entire map, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, this is probably one gas can. Now I just have to find the other. Do this Left 4 Dead 2 style. That's one. Now I just need one more. The question is where is it and to what extent will I have to backtrack to find it? Ah. This is probably the fireplace it was talking about. Some mechanism worked on the second... Ah! So I pushed in that brick. I never would have figured that out on my own. Oh, hi. <laughs> so you've completely dissolved into nothing then? Ah, oh, imagine this report. To be honest, with how long I've spent looking for the second gas can... Eh, maybe that guy did decompose naturally in the time I've been doing this. Okay, so it said something worked on the second floor. But what? Ah, this opened up. And that is the piece. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So that means that I can go downstairs, unlock that door, see what's in there, probably another gas can, refuel the generator, find the crown and save the town and Mr. Krabs. Where was it? It was down this way, yes. All right, we're finally making progress. Hello, ominous bicycle. Uh, it's another maze basement. I really have a soft spot for these narrow doorways that you often see in old, in old construction. It's almost like a picture frame that leads to another area. Oh, this is like a garage. You can't put a garage in the basement. That's illogical. Ah, but here is our second gas can. Now, what's going to be behind me? That's the question. Come on. You know you want to do something. I came down a linear corridor, and now I'm coming back. I know you can't resist. Hmm. Yeah, it never happens when I call it out. I feel like I'd be 
a lot safer if I just called out every possible thing at any given moment. Or if I just run through all these horror games yelling there's gonna be a scare, I'll actually modify the games themselves so that nothing ever happens. Turn on the lights. Will that do something for me? Yes. Okay, so now those are on. What has that done for me? These lead over to here. So presumably something in there? Like, okay, I turned on the lights in the courtyard. I've gone back and run through this whole area, and I just can't find what it actually wants me to do. Ah. There's a lever over here. That's a little bit annoying. Didn't even know that was there. So, like, tip game design-wise, it would have been a little better to introduce me, to find a way to introduce me to that lever and that garage door that I need to open before you tell me about the generator, because then, in my mind, that creates a logical connection between, okay, the reason I'm trying to power this generator is so that I can open that door. I should always know what it's for before I start working on it. Hello, strange hole in the ground. Ah, and it's like the earth is hollow. Imagine trying to run back and getting your legs stuck in that thing. So there's nothing actually stopping me from just leaving and going back to my car, right? I mean, right? And it's actually becoming very conspicuous, the number of these holes on the ground. I lost my flashlight. No, I didn't. It's right in my hand. It just sucks. It's too dark. Okay. Wow, that's really annoying. Okay, I'm gonna have to put, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to put an epilepsy warning on this video. Oh, god. Okay, I, I can, there's not enough battery. Okay, needs a key. Now, I can certainly see the intended effect here, but the implementation is just really, really annoying. Oh, god, that's irritating. Okay, there's a battery in here. I can use that place over here. Ah, I honestly wish I could just turn it off. That is so irritating. All right, you're on now. Needs a key. I don't know what I just restored power to. Door won't budge. Presumably that's it for useful things down this way. I understand how this is supposed to be scary, but in its current implementation, maybe I can tear off those boards with something. Okay. Ah, oh, this this is uh this is like for all us obscurum using batteries to power floodlights. Ah, uh, there's a vent, a climbable vent. God, this is so annoying. It's really not even scary. It's just. Awkward. I could even see if, like, maybe our, uh... A better way to do this would be, like, if the flashlight died completely and all we had were these flickering lights. Maybe that... Maybe you could do something with that. But at this point, I would literally just, like, put away the flashlight. What is this? Okay, that's telling me that I can get into that vent. But I figured that out already. I had to go over there where the vent is just to Okay, I can take you. I'll use I guess I'll use I guess I'll use you for this one. I can't even speak anymore. This really is like for all this obscurum. Place you there, and now you're on. And now I can see what's over here. Okay, so wait, I feel like this is really out of sequence. Really out of sequence and really unnecessary. Alright, so we're crawling in the vent.
Waiting for the spook. Move you out of the way, and we're back here. I guess this is the door that, yes, it's blocked. But what about this place? Nothing here. Something, that sounds like something's crawling through the vent. Uh, is there anything I can pick up and like place in the way? That really sounds like there's something crawling through the vent. Ah, oh, flare. Okay, there's the flare. Send you in there. And take the crowbar. Finally, we're ready to bash some ghost brains in. Oh no, I can't equip it as a weapon. Never mind. Okay, we got the flare. You can stop doing that with the flashlight now. You can you can seriously stop doing that with the flashlight at any time. Oh, no, the flare's burned out. That was completely useless. Okay. Now, what did I get from in there? Oh, right, I got the crowbar so I can take these things off. Yep. And in we go. We're making progress, but I still haven't found any additional batteries for the flashlight. Yeah, okay, there's actually plenty of ambient light in this area now that we've turned the power on. You can stop carrying this flashlight that's doing more harm than good. I like how when the flashlight goes out, I can actually see the dust motes suspended in the air under the, uh, under the lamp. And the legs around the corner. I'm sure those will be getting pulled ominously to the side as I approach, am I correct? No. But this corpse has got an axe in its head just like the person we saw up above. And I wonder, was the murderer in this house that we heard about in the 80s an axe murderer, perhaps? Uh, okay, okay. I'm gonna give props where props are due. This is actually a good use of the flashing flashlight. So, there's noises beyond this grate. And obviously, naturally, our instinct is to try and look through with our light, but we never really get a good look, both because of the grate and because our flashlight is only on for a second at a time. Great for this segment, annoying everywhere else. So that's something that, okay, I'm having a little a little bit of an epiphany right now. A very crucial element in horror is having something that is unnerving that we so desperately want to see to satisfy our curiosity and, like a nightmare, having us get very, very close repeatedly but each time denying us the satisfaction. Still, even for the sound alone, I wish I could just put down a stew! Ooh. Run! Okay, I'll, I'll run. Uh, ow. Okay, I guess I'm dead. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm still running? Oop. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, it's still making that sound. That was a little bit anticlimactic. Oh, I'm being dragged out. Okay, I'm actually starting to wonder if this is a bug, because there is no reason for this to be happening still. I think this flashlight thing might be a bug. Uh, that sounds like a- that sounds like a police scanner. It's almost like the house, but fully lit. Uh, 
Okay, that was a little creepy. Are we seeing flashbacks to the day of the murders? Uh, uh, oh, uh, that's unnerving. This, this would have been tripping me up in VR. I wonder, can I actually fall? Oh. Oh, we're doing some really cool things with the perspective there. Okay, I am absolutely certain this flashlight thing is a bug at this point. <laughs> uh, I recognize you, SCP. SCP-173 sound effect. to get out of here. Am I to understand that the killer is still here? I mean, I've only seen the one newspaper, so I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not sure if I've been missing newspapers or additional information. Maybe I can use these rocks to maybe knock some of these boards out. But then again, I've kind of liked having the lack of information. I know that there were murders here, and really not much else. There's certainly something to be said for not telling me everything as well. Okay, what do I do? It feels like I'm supposed to throw something maybe out of here? Yeah, I tried a couple of console commands, and I, I just can't break it. <laughs> I've actually tried deliberately breaking the flashlight, and it will not stop. But at this point, we're too far along for me to be willing to restart over this. Okay, so I looked at a walkthrough, and apparently what you're supposed to do is pry at these hinges. That was not at all obvious. I'm a little annoyed with that one. Okay, so all these rocks were a red herring. Here, you can have this one back. Oh, and you'll probably want your prisoner's can as well, so you can shake it and rattle it against the bars. Although I suppose you could always use your own ribcage. You skeletons are notoriously musical. I hope that's not racist. Anyway, there's a gas can back there. We'll keep that in mind. I really am irritated by this stupid uh, flashlight bug. Another locked door. God, just how large is this place? And who is this guy? I don't... See, that's the thing is, I don't think this is supposed to be the person I was chasing in the car. It's too dark. Well, says who? God, this is so annoying. More bodies. Ah, flashlight? And a gun. And the bug is officially fixed. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Oh, and uh, thank you, Mr. Ghostman, for inserting a new pair of double A's. So clearly this is going to be our ultimate goal. It's just a question of where do we go to find that key. Into the darker area we go. All horror maps have to have an underground segment. Uh, these closets... Whenever there's slats that you can see through, you always know that you're very likely going to be hiding in them at one point. But these have shelves inside, which prevent us from getting inside, which means... Unfortunately, they're a lot more likely to actually contain a jump scare from now on. Okay, so what are we doing? It was too dark for us to come down this way, but what do we get from coming down here? Perhaps something inside one of these cabinets, but I don't see anything. 
The shadows are making it super difficult, though. Oh, there's the killer's axe. Which begs the question, why don't we just pick it up for ourselves? There's a lot of things down here that could be useful, but of course, these things probably won't work too well against what appears to be a non-corporeal entity. See, whenever you are stuck and need to figure out where you want to go, you should always figure out what changed between the last thing you accomplished and now. And the main thing that I accomplished is getting the flashlight so that I can come back down this way. Ah, uh, there's a key right there. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen at some point. I couldn't see it because the shadow on the shelf was way too harsh. Like I said, when I turn my graphic settings down to medium, that goes away. But it does this weird texture thing when I look around. And it shouldn't be an add-on conflict. I really don't have many add-ons enabled right now except for... Well, really, there's not much enabled besides the map that I currently play. in here. I can hide in this one. Okay, well, we'll certainly be keeping that one open. Needs a... I need to hide now. Ah. Knew it was coming. I think whatever it is, it's banging on that door down the hall, the one that was locked. Oh no, it's gone dark. There you are. Now I'm not sure if I'm meant to understand that you're the person I was chasing? Or if the person I was chasing was the body upstairs and just happened to be unfortunate enough to run into you. I think he's gone. I need to get out. Okay, well, do we follow that way or do we go back the way he came from? <laughs> okay, so you didn't knock that door down, and for that matter, what actually is the state of this place? Do you live here? Have you been here the whole time? Because I'm really confused about why you would need to bang doors down. Alright, let's get out of here. I've had about enough of this place! Run, 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 run! But where am I running to? I have nowhere to go! I don't think I'll still be able to hide, right? Let's get inside. I was actually very surprised to turn around and see you not behind me. <laughs> well, the music stopped. I guess that means you're gone now? Not really receiving any indication that I'm meant to remain in hiding. I'm going to take that as an open indication that I can leave. <laughs> Okie doke. I guess he has Oblivion Guard AI. Oh no, this end of the hall is sealed up. I've been closed in. I'll have to start checking doors to see if any of them are open now. Still locked. Uh, what about the other one? Ah, this is open now. I don't really see how one logically leads to the other. I didn't see him run behind me. Ah, a ladder! I can get out! Oh, ladders are prime jump scare locations, though. I can go up two levels, or I can continue going down this way. Let's finish exploring. Ah, I see. Okay, this has me a little bit more confused, though, about why that guy had to bang that door down. Now, I guess he likes to play with his food and really telegraph that he's coming. What kind of place is this? 
All of this seems well beyond the, uh, the budgetary restrictions of a normal everyday axe murderer. When I was axe murdering, my base wasn't anywhere near this big. I have to run to the car. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to... Oh no. Oh no. I hear footsteps that aren't mine. How am I coming out across the street? Okay, into the car. Was I... Oh no. Oh no, I think I was hit from behind. I can't believe I had a gun this entire time. And that was Runaway 911, actually part one. But sadly, this map came out like three years ago, and we still have not received a part two. Which is a shame, because this was really well done. We got a whole credit scene. This was, despite having some rough edges, extremely well done. I mean, I was impressed right from that opening cutscene and the ambiance of that car crash scene right in the very beginning. And I really appreciated how, uh, unfortunately, I didn't find, like, I think even one of the collectibles that apparently unlocks a secret room at the end. Oh, Bear McReary, the composer for uh, The Walking Dead. <laughs> well, if they're going to steal music, I suppose it's nice that they're at least crediting the sources. And Lustmond Blackstar. Yeah, I recognized that music in the very beginning. As I was saying, I also really appreciated its lack of ambient light in a lot of places. A lot of maps will have light that doesn't really make contextual sense, but this one, all we had was our flashlight until we turned on that generator. And even then, it was only in certain parts of that basement area. I was a little annoyed with that flashlight bug, even if it did accidentally lead to a pretty cool scene. But all in all, that was very, very well put together. Especially for something that was presumably translated from Russian. <laughs> okay, I suppose now we can see the meme room. Uh, that seems to be the model of the killer. And uh, my Russian isn't very good. Uh, Spezhavi... Spe Alright, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Spezhavshi... Oh god, that is so hard to pronounce. Spezhavshi... Zkspavnat. I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> but I recognize that. That is Ricardo. <laughs> oh, please save me from the memes. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love... F See, this has the that classic Gary's Mod feel. In a way, this whole thing almost feels like a typical Gary's Mod jump scare fest. But just so much more well done than the others. And I like how it brings it all together with this goofy and lighthearted ending. Thank you for passing the map. Special thanks I want to highlight Radley for help in finding the retextured citizen model, and Evan Purr, the model of the flashlight. The full list of used music on the map will be written below, and you can see all- oh, that's really nice of them to credit all the sources. Technically, none of this falls under fair use, but, you know, I guess this kind of feels like something from the old west of the internet, where you could kind of get away with this stuff, and it was a lot more easygoing in that regard. And they even credit where they got the models from. This last room really does feel like an evolution on the typical Gary's Mod horror map. <laughs> like, it's got all the goofiness, all the copyrighted material just blatantly stolen. But there's slightly more of a maturity to it in the quality of its presentation. And for that, I really appreciate it. If you want to try this map for yourself, the link will be in the description. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. Okay. That's really funny, but I know I can't play it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. 
If you have any other suggestions for maps you think I should play, or even just creepy videos you'd like me to make in general, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will also link in the description. There we have an awesome community who likes to discuss all things creepy and comfy, so if you're into that stuff, I highly recommend checking it out. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Uh, it really does come together with the classic Gary's Mod vibes, because new map coming soon only to be followed up with absolutely nothing for several years. Ah, this actually, we have German written on the wall, and this looks like a bunker with a helmet on the ground in the snow. I wonder if this is supposed to be a hint at the next map that the creator was working on. Uh, but sadly, we can't go through. Alright, well, I've already done my outro. See you next time. You have not collected all the coins. Oh, I see. If I collected all the coins, I could have opened that door. Well, time for an abrupt ending, then.